physics lesson with Mr. M. In this video lesson I'm going to teach you guys how to solve for a combination circuit. Uh, the first thing that we need to know, a combination circuit has both properties of a series circuit and a parallel circuit all in one circuit. Uh, and so the main strategy that we're going to be using to solve these combination circuits is to what I call condense the circuit so that you get a series or parallel only circuit. Now this requires you to know your three rules for series and parallel circuits um, to go ahead and do that. Um, but this simple strategy will help you um, solve for these combination circuits. So I've got two different examples here where we're going to condense one to uh, series only and then one where we're going to condense to parallel only. And then I'm going to show you one full example with some actual values. So the first example here um, here we have our series resist resistor, and then here we have our two parallel resistors. We want to condense these two parallel resistors to make a completely series-only um, circuit. And so, because these two are in parallel, what you would have to do is you would just have to add those two um, parallel resistors using the parallel rule. So you're going to add up 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Whatever you get as your total condenses the circuit to something that would look like this. Where once we um, condense these two, we would call this R2 and 3 where we've condensed, we've added these two resistors using our parallel, our adding up the reciprocals to get this one resistor. Well now that we have this one resistor here, um, you can easily solve for this series only circuit. Now likewise, uh, in this um, example over here, you see we have two branches, um, so we have a parallel circuit, but within those branches we have two resistors in series. And so once again we want to condense this circuit. So we're going to condense these resistors that are in series. And you would use the rule for adding up resistors in series, which is just adding them up. R1 plus R2 would add these up, and then R3 plus R4 would add these up, and we would condense this. Um, we're basically going to be condensing this to a parallel only circuit where we would consider this resistor here to be R1 and 2 you just added them up and then these two you add up to become our resistor R3, 4 okay so that's the main strategy that you're going to be using for any combination circuit. So let's take a look at an example here. Um, here I have my combination where I have both um, kind of our parallel and series um, but also have this resistor over here. We want to be able to solve for the voltage, current, and resistance at each resistor uh, within the circuit and so um, one of the things that I teach is to set up a VIR table for all of your resistors. So I have that going over here. And I've already filled in some of the information that the diagram tells us to. Okay, so uh, once again, our first strategy is there are a couple of things that we, we want to condense. First, we want to condense these two resistors. And then that will that's going to make a uh, circuit that looks like this where R2 and 3 we just add them up because they're in series so 2 plus 3 in series gives us 5 so now we have R2 of 3 which is now 5 ohms and then I have R4 over here, which is still 5 ohms. And R1 is still 2 ohms. But now, I want to condense these two in parallel to make an even more condensed version of this circuit. And so, 
that's going to look something like this. Where I'm adding up this 5 ohm and this 5 ohm in parallel, so I have to use my reciprocals. So uh, our, our total here is going to be 1 fifth plus 1 fifth. That gives us 2 fifths. But don't forget to flip. So we get 5 over 2 for this resistor. So 5 divided by 2 gives us 2.5 ohms. And down here I still have 2 ohms uh, in that R1. My voltage hasn't changed, so that's still 12 volts. Now that I have this condensed version, I can solve for the total resistance. Total resistance in a series circuit, that's what we have here. You just add them up, so 2 plus 2.5. My total resistance is now 4.5 ohms. And then now we're just going to start filling in this table. So we have to use Ohm's law. So Ohm's law, now that we have total voltage and total resistance, we can solve for the total current. So V equals IR. In this case, um, it's going to look something like this. 12 equals I times 4.5. So we're going to divide by 4.5 on both sides. So that gives us 2.67 amps. 2.67 amps for our current. Now, once we have the total current, this is where things are going to get a little tricky. One of the strategies that I use is to draw that current. So our current is going to come through here. Some of it's going to branch down here. Some of it's going to branch down here. But then they're both going to add up as they go through this resistance, this resistor here. So in a series circuit, right, current is the same. So all of that current runs through R1. So what's my current going to be at R1? Well, that's going to that's be my 2.67. That hasn't changed because all of that current runs through that resistor. Now that I have these, I can solve for my voltage. So V is I times R, so 2.67 times 2 gives us 5.34 volts. Now, because all of that current ran through this resistor, I know that in this resistor I've used up 5.34. In a series circuit, what's my rule for voltage? The voltages have to add up to the total voltage. So how much voltage am I left over in this resistor? Well, that's going to be 12 minus 5.34, which gives us... 6.66. So what that means is because this resistor here is a condensed version of these two branches, what is my rule for voltage in a parallel circuit? Voltages are the same. So each of these branches is going to get the 6.6 volts. Okay. However, in this branch you have two resistors. So only this branch, R4, is going to get that complete voltage, 6.6. .6. This branch right here, these two voltages are going to add up to 6.66. .66, okay. Um, so we're going to we're going to get to that in just a second. But let's go ahead and solve for this current here. So once again, using Ohm's law, that's going to be 6.66 .66 divided by 5. So we get 1.3 amps. All right. All right, now going back to solving for um, uh, these two voltages, we kind of have to go back to our current. Now that we knew now that we know the current going down here which was 1.3 
and I know that my total current is 2.67 in a parallel circuit, those currents have to add up. So how much current is going to go down this branch? Well, it's whatever, um, whatever 2.67 minus 1.3 is. So 2.67 minus 1.3. We have 1.3, which makes sense because the total resistances are the same. Here we have 5 ohms. Here we also have 5 ohms. So I know that the current for each of these is 1.3 amps. Now keep in mind, these two resistors were in series, and the rule for series is that all of the currents are the same. And now that I have these two currents, I can solve for these two voltages just by multiplying my two values. So 2 times 1.3 gives us 2.6 volts, and 1.3 times 3 is going to give me 3.9 volts. Okay, uh, and it should come out. Basically, there's going to be some rounding error, but you should be able to add these two to get the same voltage of 6.6. .6. In this case, we get 6.5. So, like I said, some rounding error, but um, they should add up to the same voltage. Okay, because they are in parallel, and both these branches should have the same voltage. So, what's the main thing? There's actually two main things. Our main strategy is condensing these combination circuits. And then, our second main thing is, as you kept hearing me, we have to go back. What are the rules? The three rules for series. What are the three rules for parallel? Knowing those rules uh, is going to help us solve for these combination circuits. Well, thanks for tuning in to another video lesson with Mr. M.